What's good, y'all, man? We're back again with another video, and today we're going to be talking about the Mavericks. Before we get into that, I want to talk about the trade deadline because I was very, very disappointed, and I feel like I have to talk about that before I jump into the Mavericks. Before we get into the video, make sure you like, subscribe, share with your friends. We're only going up on this channel. So, like, subscribe, share with your friends. But other than that, let's get straight into this video. This was one of the weakest trade deadlines of all time. Listen, with all the rumors going around, as far as DeJounte Murray, the Malcolm Brown, the Jeremy Grant, Kyle Kuzma, all of these names floating around, we got fucking weak-ass trades for Corey Joseph, Robin Lopez. Of course, we got the little trades for Boyan Bogdanovich, um, Daniel Gaffer, P.J. Washington, which we will talk about later. But those are like the biggest names, and I really wasn't expecting that going into the trade deadline because for the last two months, we've been hearing crazy rumors, especially these DeJounte rumors, which I understand why they didn't trade them because I really thought myself that would have been jumping the gun. But shit. Y'all gave us rumors for the first two months of the season. You might as well just do it. But they never did it. So, just looking at this deadline, it was very, really, really boring. Like, I don't know why I stayed on my phone throughout the whole deadline while I had a lot of work to do at work. But it was very boring. We got some okay trades like Buddy Yield um, getting traded to the 76ers. I feel like I could react to that more if I know what we're going to see from Joel Embiid this season. If, if he even, even is going to come back this season, I feel like I would react to that more. We got Monte Morris to the Timberwolves. I feel like that doesn't solve shit. I think they have all the tools they need. And he's a part of those tools as of now. But the problem is, when it comes to that fourth quarter, and y'all know I love him to death, and it's not good. He's not good. He's The IQ is not there. It's just not. And then you got Cat. Oh, come on. Um, I really do love Simon... Sam, Simon, Simone, Simon, Simone, I don't know his name. Simon Pontek, you going to the Pistons. I love that. He's a very good shooter, an underrated defender. I think he's going to be a part of their young plans. Um, Xavier Tillman, I like that, but also kind of like how, um, what's his name? Luke Cornette looks for the Celtics. So, like, that trade really doesn't move me that much. Kelly Olenek and Old Child to the Raptors. Like, I was expecting Kelly Olenek to go to a, a fire at team. Like, the Lakers or the Bucks or, or the Warriors, but the Raptors, like, the fuck do they need you for, bro? And you're going to be gone, so I, I don't understand it. So, but I do love Kelly Olenek as a player. Like, I wouldn't want my Cavs, but I really couldn't get him. But I do love him as a player. I do think this is a new opportunity for Old Child. He better use this because I don't understand why he couldn't thrive in his last opportunity with Utah because I feel like he had all the opportunity to do so. You got outplayed by, and like I said, I do like this player. But Simone Fatekio was not a lottery pick. You were. You got outplayed by him and lost your spot. So, um, I don't know how to feel about that, but I do think this is a new opportunity for him. The Thunder, this is one of the trades I hated because I feel like you gave up on the pieces, which I gave, I'll clap it up for you because I feel like you need to do that, but you gave up for the wrong player. Gordon Hayward, and listen, I understand this. It makes sense a little bit. It makes sense because basically in the playoffs, he's going to be playing a lot more than Josh Giddey because when you watch the Thunder, it's 4-5. and five. Damn near 3-5, and five, depending, depending on how Lou Dorsu said they, it's 3-5. and five. But mostly it's 4-5 and five because niggas is not guarding Josh Giddey. He can't shoot whatsoever. And like I said on my Twitter, j up getting good this fast, fucked up Josh Giddey because... Now the nigga just don't touch the ball. <laughs> He's not an off-ball player. So I understand why they got Gordon Hayward, who's been in those moments, who fits in that type of role. I understand it. I think that was a good trade. But listen, Chet is a rookie. A rookie that is 7 foot, 180 pounds, and a big-ass West with a lot of big names. The biggest being Jokic. And AD, who he might face in the first round. You didn't help him out at all. Off the bench, you're next... Big is Cambridge Williams. Like, come on now. All them picks you got, throw them at for Andre Drummond. Like, just to help him out. They did just go get Bismack, but I don't know. In the playoffs, he might not be able to play. Spencer Dinwiddie he got traded for Dennis Schroeder. I love that for the Nets. I feel like he fits a lot more um, better than... Um, Dennis Schroeder fits a lot better than Spencer Dinwiddie. But the reason why I huffed and Puff and wanted to sit this trade because Dennis Schroeder got waived, and now he ended up on the Lakers. And now the Lakers have three of the same player, one being very good in that's d -Lo. One being good, but okay at times, and that's awesome reason, and one just being special anyway. So, yeah. The Bucs get Patrick Beverly. I get it. I understand it. I don't think he can change it over there. Like, like what? They're like the 24th ranked defense. They'll probably go to the 20th. But I do think he helps with leadership in our locker room because they never had that type of leader that will get on your ass, and I think Giannis needs that at times. And, of course, I think Dane needs that at times because this season, it just looks like Dane's been in his own head. 
So once they pass it up, because they had their little beast in the past, once they pass it up and he's able to talk to him the way you would talk to a bro, once they pass that shit up, I feel like that would be good for them. But I, know, I was kind of disappointed because they had their names in a lot of rumors. Dorian Penny Smith was also supposed to get traded. Lonnie Walker, same thing. And they went out there and got more age to surround around Giannis. So if you look at that team, all niggas above 30 that play. And then the only 28-year-old is Giannis. Like, I feel bad for Giannis, bro. He is on the seat, and I, I don't think they know what they're doing over there. But to the three teams that came up, say three, because I feel like one of these was, um, they got a great package in return for the people they gave up. Obviously, the Knicks. Getting Boyan and Alec Burks, listen, that is a huge, huge trade. And to us, I, I don't really know how I would rank them. I'm not going to lie. I see a lot of people be like, oh yeah, they're, they're automatically the second best team in the league and in the, in the East. I feel like that's disrespectful to us for what we've been doing, but I also feel like, and, but I understand that actually, before I get on to the next play, I understand that they just beat us and it looks like they got better. A lot of people don't watch this, so they don't even know who Sam Merrill is and how elite he has been as a shooter. They don't understand how good Max Strews, Georges Ning has been. They don't understand that. So I understand that. But I feel like that's still disrespectful to us, even though they beat us last year. I, I really do feel like that. But I also feel like that's disrespectful to the Bucks because when we look at superstars, you are supposed to beat teams like this. Even though they probably had the better team, they don't have a player that can fuck with you at all in any type of series. And I'm not just talking about a player that can match the stats you were doing. No. Nobody on that next team can fuck with Giannis. If you say OG Ananobi, I'm going to look in your face. I'm going to laugh. Nobody can guard him. So I expect Giannis, if that series was to happen, to destroy it. So that's why I'm going to put the bucks on him because sometimes star power matters. And I think if they do put OG on Giannis, I feel like that fucks up everything else. Because now you're going to have like, what? Julius on Chris? That might be good. I don't know. And you're going to have Dante on Dame. Listen, Dame's going to get out of this, this slump. It's not going to go the whole year. I swear it's not. And once he does, that will get scary. And I don't think he's going to play out this for the rest of the year. So that's why I might still have them at two. So I think the Knicks came up. They got what they need. They got shooters around Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle because they didn't have that. Quentin Grimes was not a good shooter. They had one a, a good shooter on the bench that just never played the M4 yet. Um, a lot of their pieces are inconsistent shooters. Even though Dante has been going crazy of a late, as of late, at times he can be inconsistent. Um, same thing with Josh Hart. So getting guys like Boyan who are known for shooting, they will shoot the fuck out of that pill. That's very good for them. Who can also create for himself when they do have a game with Julius Randle was not on shit. And then same thing with Alec Burks, a shooter, a real shooter, but can create for himself at a high level. I, I love me some Alec Burks. So I, I won't be surprised in the playoffs. He has a game that wins him a game. Like he's going to have a 20 point game that just comes out of nowhere off the bench. But like, bro, if you watch Alec Burks, you know, any place he's went, he's bought off. He's bought. I don't know why he's bounced from team to team to team. I don't understand it. But the nigga balls out of every spot he goes to. So he's going to be very good in this spot. But I don't think this move bumped him to where I look at them like, yeah, they can go out there and beat the Bucks, Or they can go out there and beat the Celtics. Because that's even a weird rep. Or past the Bucks. I think at, down the line, they're going to figure it out. But I, I think when you make moves like that, you make a move like that to be a top of the tier team. And I, was, I still don't think they're that. Nah, I think they're in the tier with us. I think the top two is obviously the Bucks and the Celtics. Of course, the Celtics might be on the tier by themselves. But I do think with a player like Giannis, I just have to put them up there. And then having a player also like Dame, I have to put them up there. But I think in that secondary tier with like borderline contenders, that's where the Knicks fit in and that's where we fit in. So I think that move solidified themselves in that tier because I didn't know if they were in that tier before. So shout out to them for them making that move. But the reason why... The Mavs are by far the winners of this trade down line. It's because the moves that they made made me rethink everything I thought when it comes to the West. Listen, before they made these moves, I look at teams like the Suns, and I'm like, yeah, Luka can get you that. Look at what I'm saying. Luka can get you that. I look at teams like the Clippers, like, Luka can get you that. And this is like, this might sound like, what's, what's the word they say? Glazing? Bro, it's, it's fucking Luka. <laughs> like let's be honest it's Luka look what he's taken to the Western Conference Finals look what he's pushed these top tier teams to seven before the trade deadline I don't give a fuck he can get you that he can get you the Clipper series the the, the King series the Sun series the teams that's above him he can give you all those series it just I don't know if he can beat the Nuggets this move I'm not gonna lie they can fuck with the Nuggets 
They can. They traded for Daniel Gafford. They traded for P.J. Washington. I think P.J. Washington is a better player than Grant Williams, and I think he fits perfectly. I think we've never seen a backup. Fuck backup. I'm not going to lie. Fuck. We've never seen Luka with a center like this. They thought it was JaVale. They thought it could be KP. They tried to mold him into KP being a guy that's a defensive big man, which KP has gotten better than that in the later years, but a defensive big man who can catch lobs and loves to pick and roll. That is not KP's game. That's why that didn't work. I, I love to blame it on Luka just to get my little troll off, but it didn't work because that's not the big that KP needed. Somebody brought up to my attention the other day. With Luka, would you rather have KP or would you rather have Daniel Gafford and PJ Washington? And I didn't think twice. It's Daniel Gafford and PJ Washington. Cause these are the type of bigs that he needs. The guys that can run the pick and roll know how to run the pick and roll because that's just not KP's game. Guys that can finish above the run, which they both can do. And with PJ Washington, the guy that can spread the four and an elite level four big, that is not Grant Williams. So this is this trade to me. I, it's hard to judge them because listen, we see him take these random teams to the second round, the conference finals, and like I don't even realize sometimes these niggas still have Kyrie. I'm not gonna lie, when I watch this team, sometimes I forget they have Kyrie, and Kyrie has been hooping his ass off. They fit together perfectly. This lineup, this team is gonna have a lineup down the line because I do feel like adding Daniel Gafford is gonna be helpful to Derek Lively so he can kind of learn more so I wouldn't be surprised if he does go to the bench so their lineup is going to be Luke Kyrie, Derek Jones Jr., PJ Washington, Daniel Gafford. To me, the best starting five Luke has ever had. Off the bench where you have Tim Hardaway Jr., Derek Lively, Josh Green, Dante Exum, Maxi Kleber. This is the best team they've had and they, they got guys that don't play like a J.D. Hardy who can be a six man on any team in the NBA. Not efficient at it, but he can be it. <laughs> so this is the best team I've seen him have. And this move has catapulted them to a legit contender. I didn't have them there. I had teams like the Suns. And I understood Luka could beat these teams. But I had teams like the Suns over him. I had teams like the Kings over him. I had teams like the Clippers over them. I had teams like the Timberwolves over them. The Thunder. I don't have none of those teams over them no more. I'm not going to lie. Because listen, they have a very good team. But they also have a Luka Doncic. And none of these niggas have that. None of these niggas have a player that can fuck with Jokic in the series. They don't have that. I'm sorry. And they don't have a secondary player that can fuck with playoff Jamal Murray. None of these niggas have that. You got De'Aaron. He can't even... I'm not going to lie. De'Aaron could probably fuck with Jamal Murray. <laughs> he probably can't say same thing and probably fuck with Jamal Murray. No, these niggas have a Luka Doncic who can fuck with Jokic. That is scary. This is why I'm saying they made moves that they needed to make because I feel like they already had the pieces. They just needed couple more they made moves that they needed to make they gave up niggas that don't they don't really care about they didn't like grant williams they didn't give a fuck about grant williams seth curry my dog but just too old at this point they gave a move they didn't even give up a josh screen of an old because i thought they was gonna have to do that to get pieces like that no they gave up some little bitty ass pieces and got two players that fit their best player perfectly two players that their best player has never had. He's never had a lob there like Daniel Gafford, a defensive big man like Daniel Gafford. He's never had that. A guy that can play above the rim like Daniel Gafford. He's never had a pick and roll partner like PJ Washington who can pick and roll, pick and pop, who can attack a fucking closeout. Some Craig Williams couldn't also do. He's never had this, bro. So I'm not gonna lie. This team is the second best team in the West. It's gonna take time, of course. Um, take time with the rotations. Is getting their chemistry together. But come time, plump, come playoff time. It's scary. I'm not like scared. I don't know why a lot of people had the Knicks. I understand it, but I think you niggas just looking at names. Well, when you think the Knicks want to trade that line, to me, this shit is so fucking obvious. I'm not gonna lie. And hey, call it my Knicks hate because they beat us. I don't. I don't give a fuck. I'm being so dead ass. Like <laughs> this Mavs scene. Is legit scary. They won the deadline by a mile to me. And maybe it's just because you 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 people didn't really watch Daniel Gafford or PJ Washington like that. And I don't know why, bro. If you watch basketball, them niggas is like the first niggas that come on. They come on at 7 o'clock. At least watch that. I have to watch it. I'm in a DMV. So they're on TV every day. So I watch a lot of Origins games. I don't know why. But Daniel Gafford has always been very good. He's never had a guard like this. That come close to like. Never had a guard come close. He had to rush that one year in, in, in Washington but he's never had a Luka same thing with PJ he's had Lamelo, never had a Luka 
the only thing that's holding this team back is maybe they're too young for the playoffs. You know Luka's going to show up, hopefully, because Kyrie in the playoffs has been fluky as a league. You know he's going to show up, so just hope the rest of the squad can show up. But I do think they have a deep-ass squad, bro. T Tim Hardaway Jr. has been very, very good this year. Dante Axel, when he's been healthy, has been very, very good this year. Derek Lively has been one of the best rookies. He's just been hurt too much. But that's why I feel like Daniel Gavin is going to start. Just so he can take some of the load paws off of Derek Lively. Um, Derek Jones has revived his career again. This team is very good. And again, as a Bills fan, we have this thing that we like to say is, um, remember which, who you have. Basically talking about like, we're in our down times when it look like we're going to lose. We have a Josh Allen. Denver, not, not Denver. Um, Dallas fans, remember who you have. You have a Luka Doncic. Who, they're kind of the same players. They don't have no MVPs, but it's so obvious though. They're probably the second best player in the world. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, remember who you have. They have a Luka Doncic. At any time, at any day, can fuck with Jokic. And that's essentially what it's going to be when it comes to playoff time. Because listen, we've seen for the last two years in the playoffs. Except, actually, I'm bugging. Not last two years. The la last year. We've seen last year. If you can't fuck, if you don't got to play that can fuck with Jokic, you're not going to win. <laughs> and none of these teams had a player that could fuck with Jokic. So, let's see how this goes, man. Let me know how you feel about this trade down line. I hated it. I'm not going to lie. But the Mavs are fucking scary. But other than that, man, I'll see y'all later.